All right, everybody, welcome back to Beans No Ball for the week 12 edition of Sunday Chat. Obviously, already about a third of the way into the week since we just had, you know, the thir- uh, Thanksgiving and the Black Friday. So I already got a little bit of news to talk about, but of course, let's get into everything else from the week. So, Christian, let's just get started with some news. Yeah, I'll start with the big, start with the big news, which is actually the recent one after the Commanders game facing the, the Dallas Cowboys, which is um, you know, some coaching changes happening around. So Jack Del Rio, the defensive coordinator, who has been with the team for four years, has been released along with defense with their defensive backs coach Brent Wieselmeyer. Um, honestly, it, it was I want to say it was bound to happen specifically for the coordinators. I know we just know Ron Rivera's already on the hot seat with this Commanders team. You know, after, uh, after you know not being able to pick up, and especially you know when you have a quarterback like Sam Howell. Who's you know you know you can make the argument he was proving that he, you know he's a competent quarterback for the team he could potentially be their franchise quarterback again there's no team built around him especially with, with these coaching staff and the coordinators but I mean again you could also make the argument whether I mean you traded away both your starter pass rushers um Chase Young and it was Montez Sweat if I'm not mistaken Montez Sweat and Chase Young you traded away your two star young pass rushers and the blame's going on the uh the defensive backs coach I mean sure yeah the defense is a whole i understand that jack the real he is a, you know he was he was a defensive player and his time as a player but you know a lot of arguments can be made here but again i mean really it just goes down to the front office and what this team's going to do the beginning of the season yeah I mean, honestly to me it was a pretty surprising move to i mean if you're going to be making changes on on that coaching staff probably would have expected ron Rivera to be a part of those moves and now to see he's taken over defensively kind of a head scratcher there but you know we'll see how that moves off the commanders uh, moving into pretty another pretty surprising headline that we we got to see here. Travis Kelsey has apparently been contemplating retirement in the you know, in the last couple of years, and I mean if if we really think about it, I mean sure, I mean he is only two years younger than you know his older brother Jason, which he is 35. Uh, Travis is 33. If you look at you know he is getting up there in that age you know once you're getting into those mid 30s you know after so taking so many hits i mean travis does talk about you know all all the um all, all the surgeries and and all you know the lingering pains that he he has had to go with i mean you really think about you know what more does he have to prove i mean he's got the two rings he's arguably i mean not even arguably he is solidified as a, probably a top three tight end in in the league's history i mean you know you got Obviously, you know, Gronk and Tony Gonzalez, other guys, you know, he's uh, going up against. But still, I mean, his his legacy is definitely cemented. He's got not much left to prove. So it's a, it's a he could definitely see why he's ready to hang it up. And I mean, probably in the same boat as 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 his brother, you know, probably wants to, you know, be able to live out the rest of his, you know, his post NFL life, you know, actually being able to walk around, you know, happily. Yeah, I mean, just looking at his accolades and his resume, you know, all the records he's broken, you know, he's definitely up there, you know, a Hall of Famer for sure, top three, like you said. And I mean, you know, obviously with his side, you know, it's, it's good to look at, especially his age, you know, especially once players turn, you know, 30 to 35, that's kind of like the age, you know, you would expect him to ride, unless you're Tom Brady, but, you know, I don't think there's really going to be another player like that, really, other than Jason Peters, but, you know, that's out of the question. But honestly, yeah, if, you know, retirement, it could be soon for J- uh, Travis Kelsey and, you know, Jason for the most part, but, um, you know, it looks like he still has some juice in him, but like looking at this season, it's a little iffy, but... Now moving on with one of the with one of the bigger segments is um uh, yesterday's game with the Jets and the Dolphins. Uh, Jalen Jalen Phillips, who is one of their uh, star players on defense, um, is out for the season with a, with his with an Achilles tear. Um, this is another another really big loss for this uh, Miami defense, who you know is you know not struggling for the most part, but you know there were some flaws within that team. And you would expect them to kind of like pick it up a bit, but um, that Achilles tear, especially on turf and everything, it's it's such a huge loss for this Miami defense, and you know starting to look at more with this with this turf, and because you know that's really all the injuries. I mean, with their Aaron Rodgers Achilles tear and then J.K. Dobbins Achilles tear, I believe it was on grass. I'm not too sure, but again, you know, with all the other injuries, it's something to look at. Yeah, obviously, I mean, you know, you you see the video, it was you know pretty graphic. You just see his Achilles really burst right on screen. It. Uh, clearly, I mean, I know there people do make the argument, you know, it is, you know, it could come down to conditioning and stuff, but I mean, it does really bring up that that the argument with the turf, you know, going to be a big blow to the Dolphins moving forward. Of course, we'll move it into contract news, something, you know, something we haven't really gotten into just yet that much, but Marquise Brown of the Arizona Cardinals, you know, they they are both uh, having some, I guess, positive uh, contract negotiations uh, at the moment. Brown does seem to be into. I mean, he he's he does seem interested in staying in Arizona, which you know, uh, surprising move there. I mean, we did just see reports that he was probably gonna be one of the well, p- part of the the trade talks recently, but 
I mean, hey, if it was a, a change of heart, you know, this could definitely be someone. I mean, look, if the Cardinals actually do ride out this tank, I mean, to have, uh, if they do smarten up, keep Kyler, keep Brown, you do have Marvin Harrison Jr. Obviously, we saw him play a really great role in, in that uh, Ohio State-Michigan game today. Just a, a really good core that they could be building moving forward. And, I mean, this could be something. I mean, they got a really tough division, so uh, could really build something really great moving forward. Yeah, honestly, this is a pretty underrated move by the Cardinals. You know, Marquis Brown, he still has a lot of, still has a lot of potential. You know, still a lot to work on, especially with uh, with this Cardinals team. But it's gonna be, it's gonna really gonna benefit Kyler in the long run. And you know, closing off with one of one of the final news segments is um recently as well, which was, I believe it was uh the day before Thanksgiving. Um, Shag Darius Leonard, he was released by the Colts. Uh, yeah, he was released by the Colts on Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon. Um, and obviously, there's like a production with the Colts, not really stepping into it. I've been two hours of it since he was drafted. Um, but you know, it's, you know, his numbers are still a little, we're a little low this season. Not too much production for that defense, but you know, um, he's still young. And you know, a lot of teams are interested right now, the Philadelphia Eagles and the Dallas Cowboys. So, um, and I think with Jerry Jones, you know, he was in contact with Darius Leonard after the Washington game. So, you know, there could be potential for more linebackers, that, especially with our team. You know, with Marquise Bell and Damon like you know two young guys on a linebacker court but you know having a veteran linebacker in that court would definitely develop us more and you know philly always going for these new guys to bolster that defense especially you know the defense who's slightly improving but you know still a lot of flaws but darius leonard he still got a lot of juice in him you know any team that will pick him was probably gonna be a potential pick for a solidified defense yeah and obviously you know for the those two top teams in the nfc east uh getting him could be you know that final piece to really solidify that defense so we'll just have to wait and see moving forward but of course, that is going to move us right into fantasy. Uh, Christian, the the season has been kind of going, I guess, two different ways for us. You at the top of your division, me at a measly four and seven. I mean, I'll, I'll just get into it uh, with my team. I mean, it's just uh, been rough going forward already uh, into this week. I mean, Tua gave me a pretty, pretty disgusting way to way to. Uh, you know, throw out the the first Black Friday game. I mean, sure, he had the yards and uh, a nice touchdown in there, but those two interceptions were big killers right there. I mean, most of it does make up for it. I will take that. But uh, at the end of the day, I did have a pretty big decision to make in my receivers, and I guess I'll, I just I decided to keep D Hop out. I know he is going against the Panthers. That's gonna be you know you take a big thing, but look, I mean, they do have pretty solid corners, and you you take into consideration that you know he's pretty inconsistent. So I. I'm gonna gonna take my chances there, and you know for defense, I uh, keep rotating them. I uh, decided to go with the Broncos defense. It is kind of you know, I mean you never know with them, but I mean they're going against a pretty lackluster uh, Browns offense. So, uh, this this did look like the the best case scenario right here. Yeah, and obviously now looking at my team, you know, eight and three, top of the division, you know, finally, a, you know, a fantasy year where I'm actually doing well. You know, I'm, I got a pretty big lead by a good 70 points. I mean, I have, I mean, I have Dak, CD, Brandon Aubrey, and then our defense, you know, four, four key pieces on, on the team. So that's really helping a lot, really keeping me up, you know, Dak once again balling out, Brandon Aubrey with his kicks, keeping it very consistent. Defense only got 14 with that huge blowout, but the pick six kind of did step it up. And then really looking at my other team is really just my running backs and, you know, Another receiver in the flex is really going to determine this win this week, especially with Kareem Hunt and Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon, I'm not too sure, especially with, you know, Joe Burrow finally out. So hopefully he can keep up the production he's been going on for the, the past couple of weeks. Same with Kareem Hunt. And, you know, I had to take a gamble here, whether I'm keeping Jordan Addison in the flex regardless, since he is going up against Chicago. So it's pretty much locked in to get a good production uh, here and there. But it's really a chance between Ridley or um or Pickens. But I decided to go with Pickens as this. Hopefully this doesn't come by me in the butt coming, um you know, the following week. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, you know, it's your players as well, you know, they are hit or miss. We'll, we'll just have to wait and see. And, you know, we will keep it with your players here in the Cash or Trash from last week. You know, we were on receivers and I'll just start off with, with our, our trash players because, you know, those were the guys on your team. You decide to throw Ridley in there and he decides to have the, the game of the season for himself. I, you know, I went with Pickens and, you know, he had his, his average, you know, under 10 games. So I, I took the win there. And, you know, as for as for Cash, you know, we had the little argument that I wanted to take CD and, you know, you wanted to keep him for yourself. So I went with Keenan Allen. That worked out just fine for me. So I go back up to here and, you know, now obviously we move it into tight ends. And obviously, you know, we always keep saying picking gets slim, but there's still some uh, serviceable guys out there. So for me, I'll, I'll start it with the game I just uh, talked about recently. And I probably won't look good if it goes good for me in fantasy, but 
David Njoku from the Cleveland Browns, uh, definitely, as, as I said, you know, he's going against up. I mean, sure, a pretty, pretty good, pretty resurgent Broncos defense. So we will have to wait and see how this moves up. But I mean, he is a pretty big focal point. I mean, if it's not a Mark Cooper, it's definitely going to be him. So uh, I do expect him to get a good, decent production. Who knows how good it goes, but uh, I expect him to get a good chunk. And as for trash, I'm going to go with the uh, Raiders and uh, Michael Mayer. It's an easy matchup to go with here. I mean, they're going against the Chiefs. Uh, Mayer has, hasn't really been involved in that Raiders um, offense. I mean, it's been a, a struggling passing offense, uh, to say the least. So um, I, I believe uh, Mayer is going to have, you know, just another slow uh, slow game here. Yeah, obviously solid picks, but, you know, with our luck, come fighters in the butt. But, you know, with, with my picks this, uh, for the tight ends, I have um, Dawson Schultz. For my my catcher, you know, Dalton Schultz, it's a familiar face for me, especially with the Cowboys, Dak security blanket. Um, you know, with this production that he's been getting with CJ Stroud uh, these past couple weeks, you know, it sucks to see that we let him go, but you know, he gambled on himself, and you know, that's what happens a lot a lot of times with these players in the in the league. But you know, I'm stick with him with the catch pick, so hopefully he gets a lot of production, especially with CJ Stroud throwing him the ball. And then for my trash pick, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go John Smith. I mean, we see how depleted this Falcons team is. Um, they're finally starting to get. Kyle Pitts involved more, but once again, you know how Arthur Smith is. He likes to, you know, I don't know what, what his scheme is, but you know, not adding Bajan, and then you know you have two, two, you know, combative tight ends, Kyle Pitts and John o. Smith. But you know, somewhere so somewhere in there, Arthur Smith's probably gonna, you know, screw something up with with the tight ends and probably not produce them. So John o. Smith, sadly, he's gonna go for my trash pick of the week. Once again, I, I really hope this is a come by me back. Yeah, I mean, you know, as for me, you know, you would hope he actually keeps u- using John New and maybe maybe Pitts is the one to get to stay a little lower. But, you know, we will have to wait and see. You never know with those Falcons. Of course, that's going to wrap us up for Catcher Trash and the Week 12 Sunday chat as a whole. Uh, definitely, you know, uh, hope everyone had a, a very nice Thanksgiving. Obviously, you know, uh, both of us on different parts. So had to get this uh, a little early, pre-record this for the first time that we've made Sunday videos. Of course, we appreciate everyone's support, all the all the love. You know, we, we definitely do see you. Know, some some growth, of course. So uh, hopefully you guys can stick around for upcoming videos, and I'll see you guys real soon.